She turned again to the window and the rain. Do not ask me to explain what I have done. Cannot explain it. It is not to be explained. Charles stared in the fraught silence at her back. As he had so shortly before felt swept towards her, now he felt swept away. And in both cases, she was to blame. I cannot accept that. It must be explained. But she shook her head. Please go now. I pray for your happiness. I shall never disturb it again. Those seeing the launch for the first time were unimpressed by its size and condition. One man, Universo Sanchez, assumed that the launch was merely conveying them to an offshore transport. He demanded, When do we get to the real ship? Nonetheless, he clambered aboard with the others, lugging weapons and stores, supervised by Che in a long black rain cape. Chaos followed. When just 82 men had been packed into the hull, Fidel reluctantly accepted that there was no room for more. At 2 a.m., the launch slid away from the dock, leaving on the shore 50 other frustrated revolutionaries. When it reached open water, many of the passengers swiftly wished that it had not. He had arrested many criminals in his time, quite a few of them for murder, but he had never been faced with one who had confessed, offered to shake hands, then turned to go about his business, or one who was so obviously mad. Barnaby prayed for inspiration. Uh, Harold, the press are waiting. The press? That pot-bellied idiot from the Echo? No, no, the real press. The Guardian. Michael Billington. Michael Billington? Oh, Tom. Is it really true? I knew it would come. I knew they'd remember me. Henry crosses the road to walk along the pavement closest to the garden. It rained in the night, and the air has a damp, earthy smell. Henry's usual line of work is as a medical orderly at a psychiatric hospital. He's seen some sights. In fact, it all got a bit too much for him, so he's given it up for the time being and is now working as a packer for a jeweler's on Caledonian Road. He better get a move on, though, or he'll be late for work. But as he walks along the southern edge of the garden, something on the other side of the railings catches his eye. It's a bundle of something wrapped in sacking. If ever the iconoclastic impulse seemed to be out of control, it was in the course of ISIL's campaign against images in Iraq and Syria between February and September 2015. Using the sites of violence against monuments as backdrops for violence against people, they held public hangings of the guardians of those monuments and staged executions such as that of 25 captives who were lined up, bound and ordered to their knees before being shot in front of an invited audience in the amphitheatre at Palmyra. The next day, ISIL blew up the proscenium itself. Thank you very much, Lord. We have great faith in you, Crowley. This is important. This is the big one. Leave it to me, Lord. That is what we are doing, Crowley. And if it goes wrong, then those involved will suffer greatly. Even you, Crowley. Especially you. Understood, Lord. It is the year 480 BC, late summer on the mainland of Greece. A legion of soldiers stands in formation in the morning sun. Already brutally hot, the earth under their leather-bound feet is hard and cracked. The only sound is the scream of cicadas. The air smells of wild thyme and spilt blood. In the yard, the other boys knew what was coming, so they stood away. Boitsov and Pavlushkin held Yevgeny's arms, and Babak hit him in the stomach till he vomited. Lick it up, farm boy. You eat cow sick. You eat chicken sick. They pushed his face in it and fish hooked his mouth open, but he wouldn't lick it. As his eyes closed, he remembered his family's farm. He remembered the fields and the open sky, glimpsed his father and brothers, sat round the table in their uniforms. All these things had vanished. His past was a dream. The present was wakefulness. He was alive. 
He must survive. That was all.